have all of the clean parts here for my OSFS 40 Surpass all ready to be reassembled. I just got the bearings in the mail today. Fresh bearings here, so on the front bearing I took one of the shields off already. So the bearings are ready to go. I've got the piston cylinder here. I just want to show you real quick cleanliness of some of these parts. Uh, the ring on that piston was really good. Everything in this engine internally is in very, very good shape. So um, I've got the crankshaft here all cleaned up. Nice, it looks basically brand new. I mean, this is going to be, uh, aside from the runs that it had on it, which I don't know exactly how many it had on it, it's going to be pretty much a new engine here. The head, let's get out those screws out real quick. Head and valves look nice and clean, but they both have good action. I did not uh, shoot a video of me removing it, but I did take the exhaust valve out and I cleaned up the, the, the shaft a little bit on it. Uh, but I really didn't need to. They look good and they seat well. But uh, everything here is cleaned up and ready to go, so I'm going to go ahead and get my arbor press set up and uh, begin the bearing installation. Okay, I'm going to install the front bearing. I've got my press set up here. I've got my crankcase. I'm going to put just a little bit of oil in here real quick. Kind of rub a little bit of that oil on the outside of the bearing. I'm going to heat my case up just a hair, pour that oil on the bearing. I don't heat it up a lot, it doesn't really need a whole lot of help. I have a piece of wood that I set it on here just so the crankcase didn't sit right on top of the steel. And we just press it in place. That's pretty much all there is to installation of that rear or the front bearing. Next will be the rear bearing. And I think I'm going to need to go and get a drive for this because I wasn't prepared for this so let me pause. So as I was about to say until my batteries died uh, I was going to demonstrate using the press to install the rear bearing in this engine but after I had I put the bearing on the crankshaft first and I heated the crankcase up and when I dropped this thing in place getting ready to press it in there I noticed that the whole bearing and everything fell right into place completely it doesn't need to be pressed at all. It's already seated properly. So apparently the crankcase heated up just enough so that that bearing would just slide right into the into the seat there. So I don't get to show you the press on this one, which is fine. I can go ahead and continue on with the reassembly of the engine. I'm going to continue on with the reassembly of the engine here since my crankcase or crankshaft and bearings are already in place. I can still just push this out and it's fully seated in there. So what I've done is I've started to put a little bit of oil, 3-in-1 oil in here just to kind of keep things lubricated up. And this bearing in here, there's a little oil there. I'm going to put some oil on this timing gear. This is an area that doesn't generally get a whole lot of lubrication. Now, this timing gear has kind of like a hole or a cutout in one, one side. The other side is flat. The side with the hole faces outward because that's also the side that has the timing dot. And so I just made it a little bit harder to see the timing dot because of all the oil I put on it. So I should probably clean a bit of that off so I can at least see the dot. I mean, I have a general idea of where it's located. but So I'm going to go ahead and set the timing on this engine. And what you do with the timing of this engine is the timing dot will go down here but it'll be it'll be at the six o'clock or about 530 ish position really in line with the push rods with the crankshaft at top dead center so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the crankshaft at top dead center and I'm just going
just going to kind of drop this in place in a gross manner right now because I have a magnet. And while I'm still making sure that my crankshaft is at the top dead center, I'm going to pull this thing out and rotate it until I see that it's in the proper position. It's a tooth off still. And now, top dead center, now it's timed properly. So I know that's really very difficult to see. It's going to be impossible to see on this video, but timing dot at about the 530 position in line with these pushrod tubes, directly in line with the pushrod tubes with crankshaft at top dead center. And on these engines, the crankshaft top dead center, there's a cutout. So it's a lot easier to see that. So Let's see here. Yep, there it is. So, with that done, I'm going to put a little bit of oil on this bearing. Drop a lot more oil in there. Because this is an area of the engine that doesn't really get lubricated very often, so it certainly isn't going to hurt to have some oil in there. I'm not putting a whole lot of torque on those. It's pretty small screws. It doesn't need a lot of torque. So the next thing we're going to do here is with these OS engines you have to extract the wrist pin from the piston through this hole which when it comes out it makes it kind of challenging because most engines you're disassembling aren't brand new so they're going to be gummed up a bit so what I end up having to do is I heated it up quite a bit to liquefy any of the residue there so it was easier to extract and typically I mean these always will have a Teflon little piece here that uh, acts as a, a guide so it doesn't score the side of the liner. But you usually use a small screw and you kind of just drill in there with it and you pull that thing out and if you're lucky the whole wrist pin comes out with it. I wasn't so lucky and just a little Teflon piece came out. So I was like okay now what do I do? Uh, so basically what I ended up having to do is like I said I heated it up considerably and uh, just kind of jimmied a little allen key in there and you have to line it up and try and jimmy it just right to get it to fall out it's it's really not the most pleasant thing to do by any means but you gotta do what you gotta do so I'm gonna go ahead and I gotta put my connecting rod on here it doesn't look like there's any kind of a marking on here that denotes the front the rear although I do know that one side has got a chamfer and here's the side that's chamfered so that's the part that goes in here so I'm going to go ahead and put this connecting rod on the crankshaft so we got that there now we got our piston with a nice ring that's not gummed up or anything it's free to rotate around in there see that there's a front or a rear so I'm going to attempt I should put a little oil on my wrist pin here Okay, so that went in pretty nicely. So now, let's see, now I don't have the sleeve in there, so I gotta be careful not to push that too far because now I gotta try and finagle the sleeve down over that. And you don't wanna be riding right on top of one of those Teflon things or you'll end up crunching it. So you've gotta have that, that uh, wrist pin in there just right. So I'm going to put a little bit of oil on the outside of this to help facilitate and a little bit on the inside to help facilitate this uh, this process here. Now I'm going to bring this up to top dead center if it will stay there. I just kind of used a little bit of screwing action there 
and now it's in place. So that's all it took to get that in place. Believe me, that ended up looking a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Okay, so with that done, I guess the next thing is uh, put the back plate on. I don't have a replacement gasket for this. I'm really not all that concerned about it. If it leaks, I can seal it up or just buy a new gasket set. But right now, I just want to get it back together and see how the engine's going to run. Okay, back plate's installed, piston's installed, I need to put the cam followers in. Now these do have a top and a bottom. Push rods engage in the holes and the bottom is flush so I can just, I thought I had a little bit of oil on there, I can just kind of lube them up a little bit and just drop them in place. There's no right or left. I mean, I'm sure there was when I took them out, but they're not marked, so just gonna shove those things down in there and watch them do their thing there. So we're looking good there. Now we can go for push rod. Actually, we can just go for. Let's take the push rods out. Let's take. Uh, let's do our push rod tubes. So and our head. So I still have the little O-rings or plastic pieces up here. So yeah, it's kind of get seated in there a little bit further. That's the right side. Start getting one going. I just want to get enough thread engagement there to just hold it in place and I'll check and make sure everything's properly seated here. So we just check around here. Gap looks even. So I'll just apply my It's on and it's torqued. Now it's just a matter of putting, dropping these push rods in here. Just give it a quick wipe. Again, with OS push rods, or at least these anyway, and all the others I've seen, there's no left and right, there's no tapered end. The SATA ones have a tapered end. Uh, these are symmetrical, so one can go on one side, one can go on the other. Now, I did not disturb my rockers. I didn't take that completely apart. Not for any special reason, but I just didn't. So, should just have to put this in place and make sure that my cups engage there like they're supposed to. Start running this down a little bit. sure my push rods are engaged like they're supposed to be. Okay, now they are. Okay. My rocker arms are moving just the way they're supposed to. 